tell us truly, what's really your idea of true fitness? Is it weight loss? Or is it a spanking set of six-pack abs? Or is it that glow on the face that no beauty treatment can achieve? Welcome ladies and gents to the show that's going to help you achieve all of this and then some more. Welcome to the Men's Health and Women's Health Show. On the show today, how rock climbing can not just build strength, also hone technique. Build a V-shaped back with fitness trainer Vesna Jacob. And our restaurant spy celebrates the Navratras, make simple, healthy food the order of the day. First up is the fittest girl of the moment. Women's Health Magazine's third anniversary cover girl is Jacqueline Fernandez, who kicked up an interest in the otherwise reticent Salman Khan. She's fit, she's fabulous, and in the story that follows, she'll wow you forever. It's the Women's Health third anniversary special, which means we've completed three years and we wanted to celebrate with getting somebody who's super fit. We looked for someone who would fit our value of fit is the new sexy. And there's no better person, we thought, than Jacqueline Fernandez. My exercise routine is um, actually a combination of a bunch of things because uh, I like to keep things interesting and uh, I don't like to make my fitness regime boring. So um, the week is like splattered with different, different classes and different, different sessions, you know, that I kind of uh, mix and match. Uh, everything from yoga to Pilates to dance to some kind of cardio, if, even if it means, okay, one day, today I'm just going to focus on being at the gym and I'm just going to do a little bit of weights and cardio. Um, you know, tomorrow I'm just going to go out and call a friend and play badminton and have fun so it's just about making sure that for one hour every day I'm doing something active I'm you know um, breaking out in sweat and uh, I've got my heart you know uh, rate up One very important mantra to go by is to try allocating at least an hour a day to exercise because um, that is actually the most essential thing. It uh, it keeps you healthy, it keeps you glowing, it keeps you happy, um, it keeps you fit. And just that one hour of exercise, no matter what it is, if it's gymming, if it's dancing, if it's running, if it's swimming, whatever it is, uh, have fun doing it. Okay, but just allocate that one hour, that's all it takes. Jacqueline is in the best shape of her life right now. She does yoga, she does headstands. If you just check out her Instagram feed, you'll feel totally inspired. Because really she's one of the few cover girls who can make green juice look great and possibly taste great as well. It's really important, I think, more to concentrate on uh, what you're feeding your body in terms of its nutrition. For me, it's not about uh, uh, you know what I'm not eating um, and restricting myself. It's about foods I know that will benefit me, healthy foods, um, things I know that have good fats, carbs. It's I, I don't restrict anything on my plate. It's just about uh, making sure that this is really healthy for me. This is going to be um, you know this is going to give me nutrition. This has a lot of vitamins. This has a lot of minerals, and um, that is something that I always try to remember every time you know I'm, I'm putting a meal together or something or if I'm ordering um, from outside it's uh, the nutrition of the food that is more important than I think uh, the diet itself if I had to give a tip uh, about um, making sure that you exercise in the, like every day is to try and do it in the morning because uh, by the end of the day I know everyone gets tired and then they postpone it and then they procrastinate so try and get it as early in the morning as you can. So if you're into fitness and you're looking to get the fittest body of your life then catch Jacqueline Fernandez on the April 2015 third anniversary cover of Women's Health India. Now climbing the corporate ladder may not be the easiest thing in the world, but climbing a rock wall cannot just help you build strength, 
but also hone your skill and technique. Our next story will tell you how. A pebble floor, lofty ceilings and a surface for bouldering. Combine all of this and get in some enthusiastic trainers and that's what Delhi Rock is all about. Be it the blazing summer heat or shivering Delhi winters, this place brings together the convenience of an indoor environment and the skills of mountaineers and trainers who help students learn wall climbing, a sport that's engaging as well as challenging. So wall climbing is like an Indian English term for uh, artificial rock climbing, I would say. And uh, artificial rock climbing is an offshoot of actual climbing where people wanted to train in the winter. So they wanted to climb outdoors, but obviously in the winter months you can't, so they built these indoor climbing gyms where you could heat the place and then climb indoors and get strong for the summer. And uh, climbing has now become a, a much more urban sport for that reason, because uh, before climbing required going far, play, far away and climbing these difficult things, a lot of objective hazard and risk, suddenly the risk was taken out of it and it was convenient. You could, you could do climbing in a city. The indoor rock walls provides the perfect setting to get to grips with climbing technique before you take your skills outdoor and in the process you end up getting a thorough workout. Wall climbing builds tremendous physical coordination and all body awareness. With its unique mix of aerobic and anaerobic activity, climbing builds great all-round physique and fitness levels. It's a strategically oriented, problem-solving intense sport which builds concentration, mental stamina, willpower and the ability to overcome your fears. People are not looking at fitness in the same cosmetic way as they were earlier. It's not just about weight loss, it's about fitness for life. And uh, climbing is an offshoot of that. Climbing also kind of brings into play going outdoors, going on trips, picking up safety skills, going with a community of people, trusting other people. So it's got a lot of like intensity to it um, and, and a depth, a lot of depth to it. The nice thing about climbing is that it takes the focus off the body. You know, it puts the focus back onto why the body is there. The body is there to achieve things, to accomplish, it's a, it's a partnership again. And to me that's the most powerful thing about climbing is that it, it motivates you and inspires you for the long term. The inspiration comes from within. Question the benefits I think are psychic but then they, 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 it, it spreads from there. Like, like I think that it is an amazing thing for your fitness, it's an amazing thing for your, for your strength, it's an amazing thing for your community, it, you know, like, like it, it really is a very deep sport. This sport is less about brute force and more about adopting the correct techniques. And since it's a non-competitive sport, you can climb at the level that suits you. Someone with significant shoulder problems or back problems, somebody who has major issues with their joints shouldn't be trying this. Like, in fact, in general, if you have a medical condition, you need rehab and physio and a doctor as opposed to a rock climber. It just takes a series of warm-up exercises and some basic training. And bingo, you're ready to scale the walls. If you actually watch the healthiest people around, they're basically kids, right? And kids aren't thinking, overthinking things. And I think that the best thing about climbing is that it puts you right back in the moment. It feels playful, it involves your whole body. Uh, there's a sense of letting go. You know, like I think that the psychology of climbing, in my opinion, is much more uh, conducive to long-term development and growth, you know? It's, it's playful, you know, it's safe. And it can be serious, and it can be scary, and it can be a, a, you know, a very broad sport. But the main thing is, when you first try it, you're like, wow, I feel like a kid again. You know? and, and, and to me, that's really important. Contrary to popular belief, it's not your six-pack abs that give you a V-shaped body. It's the muscles in your back. Fitness expert, Vesna Jacob, gives us a 15-minute solution to help you build a better back.
one of the most common uh, misalignments and uh, paining areas uh, for all of us who are sitting countless numbers in front of the laptops, computers, the television, sofas, are the back and neck problems. And today we are going to talk about uh, how can you sculpt your uh, body into a great shape in only 15 minutes. So-called insect. Stand, feet, hip width apart, bend the knees, push the hips back, soften the knees and shift your weight on the balls of the feet. Take a light weighted balls or whichever weight you can also use dumbbells whichever weight uh, you're comfortable with and stretch the arms toward the ceiling and stretch the arms toward the ground pull the elbows up to the ceiling on the way up inhale way down and open the arms sideways as if you're an insect ready to fly repeat 8 to 12 repetitions If you want to challenge yourself additionally, you may start with a one leg balance, focusing, doing the same exercise, balancing your body weight on one leg. This exercise is excellent for shaping the entire back as well as stabilizing your core muscles. Modify elastic band lateral laces. Take a long elastic band and adjust the resistance based on your current fitness levels. Get into athletic ready position with the feet hip width apart. Take a band and open the arms to the side without stressing your shoulders. As you come down, pull the elbows far behind as well as up to the ceiling. Repeat 8 to 12 times. To add additional challenge and dimension to this exercise, hold the open arm position and do a light rotation. This will not only strengthen your back posterior uh, muscles, as well it is going to strengthen the core muscles. Welcome back. You're watching the Men's Health and Women's Health Show and I'm your host, Jamal Sheikh. Our restaurant spy this week is celebrating the Navratras. Simple food is the order of the day. But even the simplest food needs to be monitored to make sure it's healthy enough. Here's how. Usually we talk about a lot of yummy food in restaurants pie, but this week we take a different route as we show you how to eat during fasting days, especially when you're giving your body a break and you don't want to cheat. Let's spy on Love Me Batra as she goes out looking for healthy eating options while she's on a fast. Fasting is a great way to detox your body, but only if you do it right, otherwise it can do totally the opposite. Today, I'm at a food court to pick the right choices for a healthy fast. Fasting can be a great way to kickstart your metabolism by giving your digestive system the rest it needs. So to do that, on rising, first hydrate your body. Have three to four glasses of water with nuts such as almonds, walnuts and raisins all soaked overnight. And throughout the day, your fasting meals should be a combination of carbs and proteins. And a good way to do that is through yogurt and potato. Here, I have two options. Yogurt and potato chaat which is cold and alu tikki with dahi. During fasting you're trying to give your mind and body rest. 
Also avoid anything which is deep fried, like a tikki, which is fried in oil. It is very high in fat, as opposed to a aloo and dahi chaat, which is cold. Cold boiled potato releases sugar very slowly, as opposed to hot potato. So it keeps you energetic for longer period of time. You can also opt for low-fat milk with a fruit like apple or pear as a snack instead of potato and yogurt. During fasting, you can choose from a buffet of beverages. It is very important to be hydrated during the fast, but very important to pick the right kind of beverage. Usually, fruit juices are a very popular pick. They give you instant energy but leave you with a hunger rebound very quickly. So always offer a whole fruit which is full of fiber instead of going for a fruit juice which is packed with sugar. For your beverage, buttermilk can be a great option. It is whey protein, it can keep you fuller for longer period of time and it can actually help you readjust your hunger hormones. Just make sure you don't add too many spices in your beverages because that doesn't let your body rest. Also, it's very easy to get tempted by having too much caffeine in tea and coffee during fast to rely on that extra burst of energy. But don't have more than two cups of tea or coffee in a day because it leaves you dehydrated. And instead, pack up on a lot of water. Coconut water can again be a very refreshing drink during fast. Open your fast, it is equally important to opt for the right meal and not jump into a feasting mode all of a sudden. I have aloo paratha with dal makhani and vegetable stew and appam with me. Always go for a light preparation of carbs and proteins such as dal chawal made in ghee or like here I have appam and vegetable stew which is prepared in coconut milk. Coconut and caramel ghee are emulsified fats. They are very easy to digest by your liver. So it actually entertains the purpose of detoxifying your body. Resist having foods which are made with refined flour such as maida and cooked in oil. It's good to be hungry sometimes. Fasting can be a great break from our everyday tedious routine and attune your mind with your body. Just keep it simple and don't obsess over food. Have real foods and stay off the packed foods and you'll be great. With that, we come to the end of yet another episode. For more regular updates, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Jamal Sheikh. And do keep that healthy glow intact. Because you know, we won't be happy with your fit, not until you're at your fittest.